Hello and welcome to this week's Newman Update. I'm Alexis Lomax. And I'm Amaris Manning. Terrible news broke on Easter Sunday when public officials announced that Sri Lanka had been bombed, killing hundreds of people. Sri Lanka was struck by a series of attacks starting at 8.45 a.m. Easter Sunday. Altogether, the bomb struck three churches, St. Anthony's, St. Sebastian's, and Zion Church, three luxury hotels in Colombo, the Shangri-La, the Cinnamon Grand, and Kingsbury. Additionally, a private home in Malawila Gardens and another hotel in De La Wila, Mount Lavina, were also struck later on on Sunday. On Monday, the Sri Lankan government apologized greatly for their failure to act after receiving the threats days before the bombs were carried out. Rajitha Sanaratna, a government spokesman, said that the threats referred back to National Tawi Jahamath, a local Islamist group, but he didn't think the group was capable of completing such actions on their own. Since then, multiple arrests had been made. Out of the six suicide bombers involved, one was previously arrested, but was then released. Iliam Ahmed Ibrahim was, what, was the son of a spice tycoon. He and his brother Ismeth Ahmed Ibrahim were identified as two of the suicide bombers involved in Sunday's attack. Their father, Mohammed Youssef Ibrahim, is now being held by police for suspicion of abating and aiding his sons. The profile of the suspected bombers are upper and middle class, well-educated, and educated abroad. Sri Lanka's prime minister said that several of them were under surveillance ahead of the attacks, but, ha but there was no sufficient evidence to take them into custody. The United States believes that they may have identified a key terrorist behind the attacks and is believed to have connections to international terrorism organizations, including ISIS. The United States believes that the attacks were inspired by ISIS and is working hard to determine how involved ISIS was with the attacks. Since the attacks, Sri Lanka has imposed a dust till dawn curfew, which will continue until the end of the week. My heart goes out to all the families and loved ones during this time of sorrow. Also, Joe Biden formally announced in a video posted on social media early Thursday that he will be running for president in 2020. In the video, he said, the core values of this nation, our standing in the world, our very democracy, everything that makes America, America is at stake. That's why today I'm announcing my candidacy for president of the United States. Biden's first campaign event, which is themed around unions, is scheduled for Monday in Pittsburgh. Following that, his campaign will travel to several early nominating states. A spokeswoman of former President Obama released a statement saying that Obama praised Biden's tenure as vice president, but did not mention if Obama had plans to endorse Biden. When confronted about the statement, Biden said that he had asked Obama not to make endorsement in the Democratic nomination contest and that whoever wins the nomination should win on their own merits. Now let's go over to Jake LeBrack and see what's happening with Newman's Best Day Ever event. Welcome to the Best Day Ever. There's so many food trucks outside. Our favorite is the Tater Tots one. Hey, thanks guys. We're over here at the Newman University Miranda Center, and as you can see, I'm on the mechanical pool. They're gonna start, whoa! And so we're having a good old time here. There's games, there's food, plenty of arcade games going, plenty of fun to be had. We caught up with some students before today, and we got a, a couple interviews. We're going to show you that clip now and hear what they're most looking forward to today as the day continues and what they've had fun with so far. Welcome to the best day ever. There's so many food trucks outside. Our favorite is the tater tots one, and we were looking forward to it all year, mainly because of all the free food. My favorite part today has been probably the ice cream truck, because I love ice cream, so getting ice cream for free is definitely like the best part about today so far. It has been the food. There's a lot of options out here, and enough for everybody, which is a good thing. Today's just a day of fun, so thank you, Newman, for the best day ever. Newman's looking good today, a lot of food, um, great atmosphere, great music, a lot of fun games downstairs. You should definitely come out to the best day ever because you get to see people that you haven't seen and you get to do different things that, I mean, are free. So why not come out and have fun? Um, I'm definitely enjoying the food and definitely I got my character done and I got my wire art done. So it's really cool. Definitely come out with free stuff and free fun. So there you have it, plenty of fun to be had over here at the Miranda Center. Right behind me there's a virtual reality set. We're gonna walk this way. They got a photo booth over here. They have a t-shirt design contest, not contest, but a 
t-shirt design area where you get to design your own t-shirt all on black shirts. Over here we have a tattoo artist and a caricature. Um, then we have the football area. We got some soccer balls. You can kick the soccer ball. Spence, I, I think I'm going to go kick a soccer ball. What do you think? Let's do it. That was definitely, so I missed the first time, but that was definitely 19 points. Then we got the basketball session. You got some arcade games out here for lawn games. Outside, they got plenty of food trucks. They also have a, a mobile arcade unit. And then if the camera pans all the way over there, we got a, uh, I don't even know what you call that, but uh, it sounds like fun. And then obviously right from the get-go, we are on the bull. And uh, apparently jeans are, do not do well on the mechanical bull. I slid right off. I was not expecting it to go like that. But you know, that's life sometimes. So right now, obviously this took a lot to set up. So we're gonna throw it to a time lapse to see what some of the setup process looked like. And then we're gonna catch up with DJ Bon Bon. So there you go, you saw all the work behind today, all the pre-planning you didn't even notice. That was just some of the, the technical stuff that we saw on the scene. Right now I'm here with DJ Bon Bon. Uh, bon, I don't even know what to address you. Do I address you Sir Bon Bon, DJ, uh, Mr. What, what would you like? I'll take Sir Bon Bon. Sir Bon Bon, all right, so Sir Bon Bon, how long are you gonna be here spinning for? We are here till five o'clock. Five o'clock, so if you're out there watching, come to the Miranda Center until five o'clock. Uh, what are you playing right now? We've got EDM all day long. I'll be mixing a little bit of everything, but we're going EDM all day. Awesome. So EDM music, that's what I'm looking for. And finally, what are you most looking forward to as you conclude this night? Just to see how this set goes. Really enjoy it. I've been working on it for a long time now. So to have it all pay off here, it's fun. There you go. Best of luck, DJ Bon Bon. I'm looking forward to it. And just, guys, this night does not stop. Bon Bon's here till five, like he said. At six o'clock, there's a comedian over in the Student Multipurpose Hall. I failed to mention at five o'clock, Boogie Nights and the Newman Dance Team, they're gonna be over here in the Miranda Center. Six o'clock, starts a comedian over in the Multipurpose Hall. Following that's a beat and greet. And then there's a silent party from 9 p.m. till midnight featuring water ice and chickies and peats. Plenty of fun to be had on the best day ever, celebrating the final day of classes here at Newman University. We wish each and every, every student the best of luck with their finals and uh, we're going to throw it back to the studio for weather. For the remainder of the best day ever festivities happening this evening, we will be experiencing mostly cloudy skies with an 80% chance of rain and a high of 71 degrees. Many of the Newman athletics occurring throughout the day tomorrow will be played under cloudy skies and 62 degrees. If you are planning on going out this Sunday, pack your umbrella and be prepared for showers throughout the day with a 69 degree high. The sun chose back up on Monday, breaking through partly cloudy skies and a high of 63 degrees. A few thunderstorms on Tuesday morning, leaving some clouds in the evening with a comfortable 73 degrees. The clouds will stick around for Wednesday and the temperature drops to 66 degrees. Next week finishes out with lingering showers and snug temperatures, staying consistent in the low 70s. That's all we have for this week's weather update. I'm Maria Benet Troilo. In Newman Sports, Knights Baseball fell to Swarthmore College 12-5 on Wednesday in non-conference play. The Knights offense played well, but they were very shaky on the mound. Will Hart started the game going only one inning. The Knights then used two metal men before utilizing their closer John Lindborn in the ninth. Baseball looks to end their long losing streak tomorrow against Squid and Mercy. First pitch is scheduled for noon. In men's lacrosse, they clinched the playoff. They clinched the playoff berth, and they clinched playoffs in 
a win 9-3 against Mary Wood on Wednesday. Colin Blake carried the team with six goals, and goalie Brendan Risley made 12 big saves to help the Knights win. The Knights will, take, will be back in action tomorrow at 1 o'clock where they will take on Marywood University in the first round of the Atlantic East playoffs. In professional sports, the Mets reliever Jacob Rahim was suspended two games and fined an undisclosed amount after what occurred in the ninth inning on Tuesday night's loss between the Mets and the Phillies. Rahim fired, two, Rahim fired twice at Reese Hoskins' head at one at bet. Reese eventually got back at the pitcher after hitting a two-run shot in the ninth inning the following night in their 6-0 victory, which, the team, which he took 34 seconds to round the bases. That's the longest trot in the majors since 2004. The Phillies continue to struggle, though, losing six of their last eight. They are back in action tonight against the Marlins. First pitch is at seven. Hopefully they can pull themselves out of the slump they're in. In the Sixers news, they won. They're in the second round of the playoffs. The Sixers easily defeated the Mets, they easily ended the Nets' season with a 22-point victory in Game 5 on Tuesday night. The Sixers made history at the half with a 29-point lead, the longest playoff franchise history. The boys will be back in action tomorrow night in Toronto. Tip-off is at 7.30. And I have to say, if the Sixers play like they did on Tuesday, I like our chances. Lastly, in the NFL, it came as no surprise as the Cardinals selected Sooners QB Kyler Murray with the first round of 2019 draft. The Eagles made an interesting pick with Washington State offensive tackle Andre Dillard. I personally like this pick, helping, helping protect Carson from unnecessary hits. I think he's going to be a great addition to this Philadelphia team. Well, hopefully we'll see how he does. Back to you guys at the desk. In the world of entertainment, the hype for Marvel is real with the release of Avengers Endgame, which is Today, and fans are amped. Fandango and Adam reported that ticket purchases for Endgame have broken records on their sites for first hour, first day, and first week sales, and 4,000 showings from Fandango sold out. Reportedly, Endgame made $60 million thus far from opening preview night, which was on Thursday, April 24th, and beats the amount Infinity War made on its preview viewing, which was $39 million. Predictions have been made that the film will earn between $260 million and $285 million in U.S. debut and will have the highest opening weekend in box office history if it surpasses the earnings of Avengers Infinity War, which earned nearly $260 million. With Endgame being the epic finale to the decade-long series, theaters are adding showtimes to meet the demands of moviegoers, and AMC theaters reportedly took initiative by having 17 locations stay open for 72 hours straight from Thursday to Saturday night, Endgame has been critically acclaimed thus far and is ranked fresh on Rotten Tomatoes with a score of 96% score. I myself am excited for Endgame. I am seeing it tomorrow and hopefully I can find a seat because theaters are going to be packed, but I am excited for the epic journey to come to an end because now it's time to avenge and assemble for the fallen. Now time to turn it over to our very own Amanda DeCarlis with an uplifting story. Thanks, Samaris. Now, whether we realize it or not, we all have expectations of people and situations. Recently, two people have defied people's expectations in remarkable ways. Kayshawn Baldwin from Illinois had an interview Wednesday. On his way to his interview, he was pulled over by a police officer named Roger Grimrod, Grimolis for an expired license plate. Kayshawn was driving one of his friend's cars, and he was also driving with an invalid license as his was suspended. Baldwin uh, said when he was pulled over, all that ran through his mind was that he was just going to get some more tickets and some more fines so that he couldn't really afford to pay. It was reported that the standard treatment for in, in, instances like this is to have the car towed and the driver to be sent to jail. When he informed the police officer that, he, that the only reason he was driving with an invalid driver's license was because he was on his way to an interview and that was his only method of transportation, the police officer informed him that he uh, could not let the car drive any further. Baldwin asked the police officer if he could drive him to the interview, and to Baldwin's surprise, the officer agreed to take him to his interview, as he could tell the boy really wanted the job. Now Baldwin has the police officer, Grimolis, to thank for his job. Another individual 
who has recently defied people's expectations, is 10-year-old Sarah Hensley. She was born without hands, but she loves to paint, draw, and sculpt clay. Her third grade teacher said that she has never heard Sarah say the words, I can't. Recently, this outstanding third grader won the 2019 Nicholas Maxson Award for her cursive handwriting. The award is given annually to two students with special needs, one for print writing and the other for script. As an award winner, Sarah will receive a trophy as well as a $500 check for her cursive writing. Sarah's mother claims that whether Sarah is offered help or a tool to complete a task, she always denies it. To, to write, Sarah grips her pencil between her arms. She focuses on the shapes of the letters, each point and curve. To Sarah, writing in cursive feels like creating artwork. Maybe next week as we are completing our, as we are complaining about our hands hurting from writing all of our essays on our finals, we will think of how blessed we are to have our hands. Thanks, Amanda. That's all we have for this week's update. I'm Alexis Lomax. And I'm Eric Manning. Have a great weekend, everybody.